Welcome back to today's international soccer friendly between the United States and Costa Rica, presented by Panasonic Tough Pad. Let's head between the benches to Kyle Martino in the sunshine. Kyle, who are the players to look out for this afternoon? Well, Oliver, I think it's going to come as no surprise to most, and I'm going to talk about the number 10s for both teams being a former playmaker. And starting with the U.S., Carly Lloyd started this tournament on the bench in the Olympics, and maybe outside Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach was the player of the tournament. Four goals out of the midfield and proved that she is still such a crucial part of this U.S. women's team. And for Costa Rica, Catherine Alvarado. Now, this is a player that pulls the strings in the midfield, and we talked to the Costa Rican team and they weren't shy about saying how important she is to this team especially against a US team where they won't see a lot of the ball they need her to get the possession and create a rhythm for them today Carl thanks very much indeed Carly Lloyd what a story she was scoring two goals in the gold medal match and we are underway here in Rochester New York the gold medal winners they've won three in a row the United States four Olympic gold medals in total in women's soccer They've appeared in every single final since women's soccer was introduced in the 1996 games in Atlanta. Here's Lloyd, the hero of Wembley Stadium, slides it through towards Alex Morgan, but she was fouled in the process, and it's a free kick to the United States and an early opportunity to send a dangerous ball into that Costa Rica penalty area. I spoke to Carly yesterday. She said she couldn't have written the Olympic Games any better she went from thinking her career was over she was on the bench going into the games she said she had two choices to pout or to dig deeper she chose the latter and she scored those two goals at Wembley four goals in total during the games Megan Rapino is screening the ball from the Costa Rican goalkeeper Shannon Box runs over it Lloyd will strike one but it's over the top of the crossbar and into the crowd behind the goal so big news today from US soccer, Pia Sundhager, there she is, coach for the last five years. What a record that is. She's decided to step down. She'll be in charge of this match and the next game on the fans' tribute tour in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks' time against the Australian Matildas. She'll pursue opportunities in her homeland of Sweden. The vacant job there in the Swedish national team may interest her. They host the European Championships next year. Costa Rica with their first spell of possession. Christine Granados was there, but the US have it back. Tobin Heath is Alex Morgan, always willing to run down the channels. She's working here against Maria Fernandez, and she manages to win a corner kick, the first of the match for the United States. What an Olympic Games Alex Morgan had. That memorable headed goal, a rare headed goal for her to decide that epic semi-final at Old Trafford, the home of Manchester United. 4-3 against Canada. That sent the United States to the gold medal match. In that game, Megan Rapino scored directly from an in-swinging corner and she's got an opportunity maybe to repeat that feat. Rapino into the area. The goalkeeper flaps at it. The shot comes in from Box, and it's over the crossbar. Erica Miranda there, just about did enough. The goalkeeper, and Shannon Box, plays the shot left-footed over the crossbar. Well, set pieces are going to be so crucial in this game for Costa Rica. They don't have a lot of height. A little push from the goalkeeper there. Unconventional punch out comes to Shannon Box. Good pressure on her as this ball comes out. But look at that little push right there on Alex Morgan. Gets away with one there. But set pieces with how tall and how dominant the United States are in the air. This is a very short Costa Rican team. It's a young side as well from Costa Rica. Only three of their players born before 1990, would you believe? Well, that's a bit of an errant elbow from Maria Fernanda Barantes into the face of Alex Morgan. Play on though. He banyas the referee today. Here's Tobin Heath. Nice backflip from her. But Gabriela Guillen, the number four from Clayton University is not fouled play on cross comes over it's a difficult one for erica miranda at her near post from alex morgan but she deals with it at her near post there's the costa rica coach carla alman she said to us yesterday it's a big challenge here playing the united states with such a young side it's a huge honor to play the number one team in the world and it's a very big responsibility 
It is a young side. It's a program that's developing in Costa Rica. She did add, if we want to be better in the future, we have to play the best teams. What an experience this will be for them. It was funny, Arlo, I was watching the Costa Rican team during warm-ups, and at one moment they stopped and looked over at the U.S. team. It looked like there was a little fear in their eyes, and I know that look. It happened to me during the Confederations Cup when we played against Brazil. And I saw Ronaldinho on the other side of the field, and I watched him for five minutes. That was the face from some of these young Costa Rican players looking over at the stars. I guess you soon have to forget that, don't you? Get your mind back on the game, Kyle. We spoke to one of the substitutes for Costa Rica, Noel Sands. Maybe we'll see her later on. She's born in California. And she said she watched every U.S. game, start to finish. They are a massive inspiration to her, but she's been in the program for... Costa Rica, she's only 17 years old, attends high school in uh, California. She's been in the program there since she was 15 years old, so I wonder if we'll see her a little later on. on. Granados, Mariela Campos, and here's the captain Alvarado, plays into the midfield where there's a little bit of space here for Costa Rica to work with. Left hand side is Maria Fernanda Barantes. One of only three players in this Costa Rica side to have scored an international goal, but Carly Lloyd picking up where she left off at Wembley Stadium. All action performance from her so far. Here's Shannon Box who made her return from injury in that final against Japan at Wembley. She was injured after 17 minutes of the opening game against France. And if you were following the women's tournament and the US national team, you'll know that they fell two goals behind in that game. Eventually won it by four goals to two. Edge of the air is one back, what a flick. Megan Rapino. Opportunity here, the drive comes in, that's a terrific save at her near post by Miranda. Almost the opening goal for the United States in the sixth minute. Terrific flick by Abby Wambach. That delighted her hometown crowd. US get possession back, Lloyd to Tobin Heath. He's nudged by Campos. Play on, says the referee, referee Ibanez, who's from Sarasota, Florida, and appears in the early stages to want this game to flow. Well, it's going to be important for both teams on this surface. This artificial surface is packed down more than usual, and it's going to play so fast. So early on in the game, they have to recalibrate, play to feet more often, and also take a little bit off of the ball. Nice one-touch soccer here by the United States. Lapel, but infield. Another nice touch by Wombach. She's onside here. It's Alex Morgan. Can she get there ahead of the goalkeeper, Miranda? No, a, another stunning save by the 27-year-old shot stopper for Costa Rica. There was a hesitation by Alex Morgan. I think she wondered if she was onside or not. The flag stayed down, and she maybe lost a split second that she could have got onto that ball. Good flowing soccer, though, by the United States. Guillen. Alvarado switches the play to the Costa Rican right. But Kelly O'Hara was there to intervene. One of only three players to have played all 570 minutes across six games. At London 2012, Hope Solo and 37-year-old captain Christy Rampone were the others. It was such a terrific effort by the United States. Let's take a look at that last chance here, Kyle. We'll get back to that in a couple of minutes' time. Here's one back. Free kick to the United States. Well, this is just terrific awareness from Abby Wambach. Look at this flick right in the path of Rapino. She takes a good positive first touch, tries to rip it near post. That's a good save from Miranda, who's expecting that ball low, hard, far post. Isn't that what Abby Wambach does to the opposition as well? And defenses, Kyle. Look at how far infield Gabriella Guillen, the left back, was. She's a totem, a pivot in attack, Abby Wambach. She attracts the defend defenders like bees around a honeypot, and that gave the space for Megan Rapino. It was a good save by Miranda as well. Rapino with the free kick. One back to aim for, just on the edge of the penalty area here. Floated in, good header by Alvarado, back defending. Here comes a drive from Amy Lapelbet forward. Still there for the United States. Rapino, Morgan. Bueller with the left footed cross towards the back post, but it's behind for a goal kick to Costa Rica. Rachel Bueller, a.k.a. the Bulldozer. The 
United States created a new women's soccer record at the Olympic Games in London, although the games are played throughout the United Kingdom. In Glasgow, Scotland, Manchester, Newcastle in the northeast. They played at Old Trafford, a very famous state in the home of Manchester United, the so-called theatre of dreams. But they scored 16 goals as Shannon Box takes an awkward fall. She'll be OK. They beat Brazil's tally of 15 in the 2008 Olympics. Six wins out of six at the games in just 16 days. They outscored their opponents 16-6. And after trailing France 2-0 in that opening game, they were shocked but confident of coming back to the United States. They then embarked on a 360-minute shutout streak. Hope Solo, crucial to that. When I talked earlier about Carly Lloyd being the player of the Olympics for me, and one of the reasons is she starts on the bench, and it's very difficult as someone who's been a starter for this team and a crucial veteran player to start on the bench and ha be called on right away and come up with huge plays and immediately make a difference on this team and make a difference without Shannon Box behind her, which, you know, when you saw in that gold medal match, that's her preferred position, to let Shannon Box float in behind her, block all those holes, do the dirty work, and let Carly Lloyd get forward and make the magic. So, Ben Heath, I think that came off Megan Rapino last. No, says the assistant referee, throwing to Costa Rica. It was fascinating talking to Carly Lloyd yesterday. She said, I visualized in that game that we go 2-0 down. She goes through all different scenarios in matches to see how she would react mentally. She visualized she would score the third to put United States 3-2 up, and that's exactly what happened in the 4-2 victory. It was some goal as well. If you watch the final and that rasping right-footed drive and the second goal, it was similar to that, but further out. Wombat wins the ball back. Into the area, Tobin Heath threads it through to Alex Morgan. The drive comes in, left-footed, it's over the crossbar. They just need to recalibrate. Get their shooting boots back on here, the United States, but there's some good pressure here on the Costa Rican back line. Well, Tobin Heath is a special player. Look at the strength of Alex Morgan, but this is what I love from Tobin Heath. She likes to tuck in. She's not a typical outside midfielder, but look at this, little scoop pass. She knows the foot's gonna come out to block that pass on the ground, gets it to Alex Morgan. Morgan trying to go high near post, just gets it a little high. Lloyd, one back, lovely turn. Still Abby one back. Threads it through, Alex Morgan, the flag's up, it's offside. She rolls the ball into the net, it was a lovely finish with her right foot, but the flag instantly went up on the near side of the field here. And the goal is ruled out. Just leaning offside, the timing wasn't there. If that pass was the earlier touch, she might have had it. She tried to hold up her run, put a nutmeg on the goalkeeper, but doesn't matter. And now we've got a free kick to the United States on the edge of the penalty area. The flag definitely went up. It was She was in an offside position, but was there a foul perhaps on Abby Wambach as she was playing that ball through? That's the decision of the referee, Christina Ibanez. And there's a quartet around the ball here. What an opportunity for the United States. Let's take a look at this, Carl. Well, just as Abby Wambach releases that defender, leaves her feet, takes Abby Wambach out a little bit, and this is a very, very dangerous area for a free kick. Mega Rapino is over it, Shannon Box there as well. The referee couldn't have played the advantage because of the offside. Rapino strikes it, takes a reflection off the underside of the bar and into the back of the net, and it's 1-0 to the United States. She scored two in the semi-final that epic night against Canada, a 4-3 victory, and she's opened the scoring in sunny Rochester at the start of the fans' tribute tour. But when you lack a little height in your wall, you have to get off your feet, and the one player that doesn't get off her feet, it goes right over her head. You'll see her stay on the ground. Takes a little bit of a deflection off of Alvarado, off the crossbar. Nothing Miranda can do about that one, and Rapino does it again. A trademark leap from Pia Sundhaga. How many times will she perform that duty over the next two games? Her final two games in charge of the United States. But Megan Rapino, via a deflection from Alvarado, opens the scoring. Three goals and three assists in London 2012. She told us yesterday that the electricity at Old Trafford during that semi-final victory over Canada, which was sealed in the 123rd minute, was palpable in the stadium. 
she had an excellent Olympic game she said she was very happy with the tournament she felt active productive and dangerous throughout the feeling at the final whistle and the gold medal secured we did it said Megan Rapino and she's actually got a gold medal with her Kyle I don't think it's left her side since she left London she's gonna be sleeping with her it's her first Carly Lloyd He's actually scored the last three goals in Olympic finals for the United States. Wonderful play. Abby Wombat threads it through. Tobin Heath marauding towards the edge of the area. Tobin Heath left footed. A superb save by Miranda, who you can argue is the player of the match so far, despite Costa Rica being a goal down. But more lovely flowing soccer come on, come on. from the United States. Tobin Heath again. She'll have a go here at Daniela Sainz from the University of South Florida. Three of the back four for Costa Rica go to university in the United States. Carly Lloyd is everywhere at the moment. Here comes the cross. One back! Oh, the crowd almost got what they came for. Inside the six-yard box. She doesn't miss many of those, but there's 75 minutes remaining. Well, terrific combination play here. One and two touch right in the stride for Abby Wambach. This is where she takes the pace off the ball a little bit on this surface. Bobbles up. But Tobin Heath catches all of that one, and Miranda with an outstanding save. And here's the next opportunity. Look at the strength of Wambach. She knows this is coming to her. That's a layup. You see Abby Wambach put those away nine times out of ten. She sets high standards for herself, and she would have expected to put that away and add to her tally of 143 international goals. This is her 189th appearance. She's level with Christine Sinclair of Canada, who memorably scored a hat-trick in that 4-3 defeat for Canada. Abby Wambach leveled things at 3-3 from the penalty spot, remember. Mia Hamm holds the international scoring record with 158 goals, and Abby Wambach is closing in on that record. Said it's not important to her, but it would be significant for sure. Here's Morgan, Rapino, Shannon Box. Looks around to her left-hand side before the ball arrives, assesses the space of her teammates. It goes back to Rampone. Here's Rachel Bueller. Christy Rampone, the captain. She's played every minute of the last three gold medal winning games for the United States. Alvarado, no foul on Rapino. Here's Raquel Rodriguez. She goes to Penn State. But the attack ends for Costa Rica. It could be a quiet day for Hope Solo, as we saw in a three of the matches at the Olympic Games. Good challenge by Guillen. Here's Rampone again, playing in her 267th international. Well, you're seeing the youth and inexperience come through for Costa Rica. They're late to positions, and the United States are having an easy time playing out of pressure. And then when they win the ball, they're so tired from chasing it around that they're giving it back to the United States too easily. Rampone finds Tobin Heath in space. Guillen is just hanging off her slightly, the fullback. Space here for Carly Lloyd. Sprinting forward on the left-hand side. In plenty of space is Kelly O'Hara. Good skill from her. That's going to be into the USA. Important Arlo for O'Hara and LaPelba to get forward. Rapino and... And Tobin Heath love to tuck in. They open up those channels. And in a game where you're going to win a lot of aerial battles and you want early service, it's up to those outside backs to fly down those flanks. Space here for Raquel Rodriguez. Alvarado, very much the playmaker for this Costa Rica side in the center of midfield. Give away again. Here's Carly Lloyd for the United States. Forward it goes to Alex Morgan. Wide on the left-hand side is Tobin Heath. Abby Wambach immediately makes a run towards the back post. Still Tobin Heath. Low cross comes in. Wambach! Saved by Miranda again. It was a super run by Abby Wambach. And she was found with a magnificent diagonal ball from Tobin Heath. Miranda is playing a blinder here in Rochester. Well, Tobin Heath does such a good job of getting by her defender, picking her head up. And look at this little run right in the blind spot of the defender. Huge save from Miranda. That's tough off the skip for Abby Wambach to get good contact on that. Miranda's standing on her head at the moment. And it's another free kick to the United States. 
Megan Rapino with another opportunity to send one of those teasing centers into the penalty area. Miranda just orchestrates her wall containing two teammates to the back post, says Abby Wambach, who's in the mood. Rapino goes to the near post, the header comes in, it's still there for the United States, shot comes in from Carly Lloyd, she's still battling for possession, and it's hooked clear by Christine Granados. Let's head to the set to Kate Margraf, former US international. Kate, what's your assessment of what you've seen so far? Well, the United States is doing a great job possessing the ball, and that's buying time and space for their outside backs to get involved. And that's apparent when you see Amy LaPelba actually getting a shot on goal and Rachel Bueller in the next play. So that's a great sign for the United States. Costa Rica needs to put a little bit more pressure. Otherwise, this is going to be a very long day for them. Thank you, Kate. 201 appearances for the U.S. women's national team. Two Olympic gold medals and a silver medal in 2000 as well. And another free kick to the United States. More thoughts from Kate to come throughout the broadcast this afternoon. 20 minutes gone in Rochester at Salem Stadium. A sellout crowd of 13,000 present. They are infused by what they are witnessing from the United States out here. Megan Rapino will take this free kick. I'm sure she's aiming for the meaty forehead. I'm sure she won't mind that description. Of Abby Wombach at the back post. She's being marked by Raquel Rodriguez, the Penn State freshman. She's given her a torrid time. Low drive this time towards the near post. Costa Rica managed to smother the ball clear. Rachel Bueller was there putting pressure on Miranda, the goalkeeper, who was firm again. But Miranda's going to lose her voice before this game's over, yelling at her defenders to get closer to their marks. If there is a new professional women's league in the next couple of years, there are rumours that that is the case. I think Miranda may be looked at by a new side. Who knows on the back of this performance? Rapino, deeper service this time. Flicked header from the defence. Shannon Box at the back post. They smother the ball clear again here. Calmness at the back here from Rodriguez, Costa Rica. But she's running out of real estate, and in the end she can seize the throw in. Shannon Box will take it. Pearson Hager admitting to us yesterday it was a gamble to bring her back for that gold medal match. Here's the cross. One back with the header. She couldn't get any venom in it, and it loops into the hands of Miranda, who's just made her sixth save, and we're in the 22nd minute of the match. She's teasing the crowd here, Abby Wombach. She was present at the unveiling of Wombach Way, just outside of the stadium here. As we mentioned at the top of the programme, aficionados of the, the world game will know that Wembley, where they won their gold medal, will just break off for a second. Here's Alex Morgan, she'll try and lob Miranda, not enough arc on that one, and Miranda makes save number seven. The Wembley Stadium, where they beat Japan 2-1 in the gold medal match, has a Wembley Way that leads up to the stadium. 80,000, 90,000 fans normally march down there to watch their teams, be it England or their club sides in big FA Cup games. Well, here in Salem Stadium, Rochester, there's a one-back way in honour of one of their famous sporting stars. And there you go. She told us yesterday she could have gotten rid of 120 tickets, but in the end she was restricted to 60. Lots of friends and family present to see number 14 in action. Shannon Box into the feet of Abby Wombach. Not a good one-touch play for her so far. The ball just holds up on the field turf here. Back she goes, finds the feet of Box. Nice move from the 35-year-old, back onto her favoured left foot. And advancing down the left-hand side is Kelly O'Hara. Three red and white shirts to aim for. It's not a particularly good cross this time from O'Hara. It's cut out by Diana Sainz. Will this be a rare foray into US territory for Costa Rica? Rodriguez loses out. Rachel Bueller, centre back to left winger. Has a look up. Who's pushing try and find here? Cross to the back post. There's the moment. And it's been coming. Back on home turf in Rochester, New York. Abby Wambach scores in front of her adoring fans. And to the sideline she goes to Pia Sumhaga.
International goal number 144 for Abby Wambach. She's back into second place on the world charts. And that reaction tells you everything about what this team feel about Abby Wambach and Pia Sundhaga. Well, and as that ball was coming far post to Abby Wambach, Pia Sundhaga just to my left jumped up and did a little shadow header and knew that was going to get to Abby Wambach and that was gold once it found her head. What a roar when the goal scorer was announced again over the PA system here at Salem Stadium. The ground shook beneath me in the main stand. The United States are turning on the style here. Talking to one of her youth coaches last night, Abby Wambach. She said she played boys soccer until the age of 13. And she went to Mercy High School in the area. In a, re in a championship game in her sophomore year, head coach Kathy Borton took her from her favoured striker's position and put her in goal with a minute and 23 seconds remaining of a championship game to save a penalty and that's exactly what she did what did i love the most about abby wambach is of course she's a terrific goal scorer but it's her competitive nature and you talked to pia sunhaga and asked her about the redemption of winning gold medal and she said she wasn't really thinking about it but abby wambach was abby wambach used that as fuel and before the olympics she said it's very american of us to come back to fight to want to use the fuel of losing games in World Cup finals against Japan to show that we're the best in the world. Carly Lloyd advancing into the penalty area, still Carly Lloyd. She goes to ground, no penalty kick. Kate, you're a former teammate of Abby Wambach and a good friend. What is, what is your assessment of her, her career so far and her character? Well, Abby is a very emotional player, but that's how she finds her inspiration. If she isn't angry, if she doesn't have a goal in her mind, it's hard for her to focus, and she is one of the best all time, but playing for Pia Sunhagi, she's allowed all these players to be their own individuals and to accept and respect that, but also improve them at the same time with honest feedback. So Abby's blossomed under Pia, but Abby has been a prominent fixture on the U.S. Na women's national team for many, many years since her debut. And hopefully, from a U.S. perspective, many years to come. Let's take another look at the, the big moment for her. Well, how do you like this? Your center back, Bueller, off the left foot with an outstanding ball on a rope. Look at this service. Just finds that window. The defender reaches up, can't get her head on it. Abby Wambach, again, living in the blind spot of the defender, heads it in the empty net. But that's all in the service from your center back. How much confidence is this team playing with? That's what Wambach does best out of those 144 goals. 58 now have come with the head and if you think back to the gold medal match against Japan the scoring was uh, opened early on in that game in the ninth minute by Carly Lloyd I think 80,000 people in that stadium thought it was Wombach who'd scored on the end of that Alex Morgan cross with a left-footed volley it was a stooping header in the end by Carly Lloyd that took the ball almost off Wombach's foot long-range effort comes in from Rodriguez and it's the first save of the game by Hope Solo but that'll provide some succor for Costa Rica as they look to get back into this game. Wombach's first reaction then when Carly Lloyd almost took the ball off her foot to score the opening goal was where did she come from? I think that's what 80,000 people were wondering as well. She said, well, it's a good job she didn't do it. She was facing the goal. And she said she's not the best volleyer. Who knows, it may have gone over the crossbar. I somehow doubt it. She was in form. She'd scored five goals in five games. When we talked about right before that game started how important Shannon Box coming in would be for Carly Lloyd getting her freedom and going forward and what would she do with that freedom and well she just scored two goals in a gold medal match. Abby Wambach is now back to doing what she feels she does best heading in pinpoint crosses from her teammates. Captain Christy Rampone for the United States made her US debut way back in 1997. Wambach, Alex Morgan has Tobin Heath just towing the line trying to stay on side. Here's Abby Wambach with the left foot. Miranda's lost it, but she's gathered it just in time. Intelligence from Morgan not to play it through to an offside Tobin Heath. 
And there was Abby Wambach lurking. Alvarado. Sainz. Shannon Box with a crunching tackle. It is a friendly. She'd actually come off second best. She stays on the ground after that challenge from Alvarado. Back on her feet now, limping. The pace just has slowed slightly in the past five minutes after that frenetic opening. A two-goal burst for the USA. Guillen is Daniela Cruz from the University of West Florida. Now Mariam Ugalde. Well, the pace of the game is slowing down a little bit, and that's giving Costa Rica a little more comfort on the ball. They're moving it around, playing one and two touch, but they have to protect it. One back. Tobin Heath. Alex Morgan by the penalty spot comes to the near post. Still Tobin Heath. Drills it into the area. And in the end, it was a good clearance by Deanna Sainz, and it's a corner kick to the United States. Pia Sundhager told me during the Olympic Games that she sees Tobin Heath's future as a playmaker, a number 10 as we call them in the game. Carly Lloyd wearing that number now as an attacking midfielder, but maybe Tobin Heath's skills suited to a more central attacking role in the future. She plays wide on the left-hand side at the moment. Here's Rapino with the deep service. One back is there! And one back has a second. She is a beast in the air, Abby Wambach. 145 goals now in international soccer. She's turning it on here at her home stadium in Rochester. Well, there's no way to defend her. You can body her up. There's a defender trying to body her up. All she does is get to the spot and out jump everyone. And, and, and when you have service that gets past the goalkeeper, goalkeeper comes out. Rodriguez, definitely not the player you want on Abby Wambach. But her timing is impeccable, her strength, she doesn't get knocked off the path, and Pia Sunaga loves it. Three leaps and counting. Goal score in the 31st minute. Gabriela Guillen plays for Creighton University. Melissa Herrera battling for possession. Lampone can seize the throw in, and Guillem will stride forward to take it. 20 years old against a 15 year old. Absolutely. Herrera, she could be Christine Rampone's daughter. <laughs> Daniela Cruz, all the way back. Oh, that's a dangerous back pass. It had Erica Miranda scampering for a split second. U.S. Soccer and NBC is presented by the Panasonic Tough Pad Tablet, Fearless. And by Century 21. Century 21 is the official real estate company of the U.S. Soccer National Teams. 33rd minute, 3-0 to the United States. Two goals for Abby Wambach. One for Megan Rapino. And above all, joy for the crowd, an enthusiastic sellout of 13,000. Morgan, Carly Lloyd, more possibilities here for the United States. Morgan's going to have a run here as so he try to slide it through. It's still Morgan. She'll go it alone, Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan, edge of the area. Low drive comes in, and another smart save by Miranda. She wants to join the party, Alex Morgan. 30 goals in her, 48 international appearances well, one of the impressive parts of alex morgan is her control at top speed lucky to see this one get back but watch this little cut with her left foot at top speed gets it onto her right and she gets so much separation with that top gear gabriella guillem will stride forward and take this throw in for costa rica by the way her coach at creighton bruce erickson says it's an experience that guillem will never forget but she's got to be back tomorrow to play kansas for the Creighton Blue Jays. Busy weekend for this 20-year-old with the throw-in for Costa Rica. Goes down in a heat, and in the end, it's a free kick awarded by Ibanez. 
for the challenge on Emile Pelbe. Well, regardless of the scoreline, at the end of the 90s, this is such a big game for these young players from Costa Rica. Only three players on the roster born before 1990. This is a moment that they will reach back at points in their career and call on. This is such a crucial learning experience for a lot of young players. They've never qualified for an Olympics or a World Cup. They did come fourth in the 2010 CONCACAF Gold Cup. That's the regional tournament for North America, the Caribbean and Central America. The FIFA World Ranking is 40, but it's rising all the time. Here's Le Pelbe. Tobin Heath has switched flanks in field to Morgan. It was an excellent run by Rapino to take away a couple of defenders as well. The United States can advance down the right-hand side. Costa Rica have never scored a goal against the United States. Eight matches, eight defeats. 37 goals before today, that tally has now reached 40. Dating back to a 8 nothing defeat to the USA in 2000. Ooh. Tobin Heath slides it through, is O'Hara, but she's offside. But they have been getting better recently against Costa Rica. And if you go back, Carl, to the Olympic qualifiers in Vancouver earlier this year, they were competitive in the semi-final. It was the game that the United States actually qualified for London 2012. It was 3-0 in the end, but it was only 1-0 after 72 minutes of the game. So it's definitely a country and a program that's getting stronger and stronger. And their aim, according to Carla Elman, who you just saw a moment ago, is to qualify for the next World Cup in 2015 in Canada. Well, and I like a coach's decision to bring all these young players in to get this learning experience. If you're thinking of the future and you're thinking that far ahead, let the young players start to learn today. Here's Carla Ullman, used to play in the Costa Rican League, former coach of the under-17s for the national team. Here's Guillem, immediately closed down by Megan Rapino. Good play by Guillem into the feet of Rodriguez. Here's a 15-year-old Melissa Herrera. Catherine Alvarado. Down the centre towards Rodriguez, but he's cut out by Rachel Bueller. Well, Alvarado just trying the difficult killer pass there. They need her to get on the ball, dictate a tempo, move the ball left and right. Give them a little bit of a break. They've been chasing the ball so much. Big test of the fitness of the United States today. Alex Morgan. Still Alex Morgan. Here's an opportunity. And that's what she does best. Lethal in front of goal. The score of one of the most famous goals in the history of US women's soccer against Canada in the semi-final in the 123rd minute. This one not quite as significant, but the crowd have enjoyed it all the same. It's 4-0. Well, when a lot of players are looked at, Alex Morgan as a forward is looked at as a fast forward. But what I love is her strength and balance. Gets knocked. Watch this little pirouette. Shoulder to shoulder, pirouette, gets turned, first touch positive. Gets her head up, tucks that one away. That's what I love about Alex Morgan. She has that top speed. Yes, she's lightning fast, but she doesn't go down easily. Terrific strength and a lethal finisher. A 21st international goal of 2012. Quite the year for Alex Morgan. You remember she came on as a substitute in the World Cup final, that heartbreaking penalties defeat to Japan. She scored a goal. Now a starter. And has got a wonderful relationship with Abby Wamba. Kate Margraff, she really is a superstar in the making, isn't she? If if not already, Alex Morgan. Girl, I, she has 20 goals, now 21 this year with 12 assists. And the great thing about her is she makes the game unpredictable. She stretches out defenses with her dynamic runs, and her movement is probably the most intelligent movement off the ball for 90 minutes in the world. Kate, you were a defender. How do you handle Alex Morgan? Well, one thing, you have to have constant focus and concentration for 90 minutes because as much as you need to worry about where she is, you can't give up your shape in the back. So she is just a headache and a t Compare that to a Wombat, I mean, you have two players that complement each other with their differing styles to a point where they are impossible to defend. What a duo they are. Look at Costa Rica. 
a rare foray into US territory, but it breaks down just outside the penalty area. The strength on one back. Solid challenge by Guillen. Now Alvarado. By the way, this year in 2012, if either Morgan and Wombach score, both of them have today, the US are 9-0. Oh. It's soon to be 10-0. Oh. But here come Costa Rica, edge of the area. Drive comes in. Wide it goes. Maria Fernanda Barantes. Just trying to slice it with the outside of her right foot. Didn't quite get it right. Great chasing this ball down. Trying to shield it out. O'Hara. Ball comes in central. Bueller shifts over a little too much. He finds that window. And Barantes trying to get it to the far post. Just can't get the right contact on the ball. But you can see they're outside of the 18. They're not afraid to test so Hope Solo. But haven't really done much to test the best goalkeeper in the world. Costa Rica just putting a little bit of pressure on the US goal. Long drive there from Christine Granados, who attends Virginia Commonwealth University, 22 years old now. Hope Solo yet to be seriously tested. Amy Lapelbe. Megan Rapino. Can't get there ahead of Daniela Sainz. Out of play, throw into the United States. We're pressing for a fifth goal inside the final four minutes or so of the first half here. A glorious day in Rochester, New York. Salem Stadium looks an absolute picture. Packed to bursting point, and the crowd and the players out there enjoying themselves. Carly Lloyd drive, deflected! Miranda gets something on it, and also, he goes behind by the outside of the foot of the post. And it's a corner kick. Well, Carly Lloyd outside of the box. Terrific from Tobin Heath, where they're back to the goal. But Carly Lloyd not afraid, right or left foot, to just unleash. Doesn't catch it clean. Miranda sees that one go by, a little fingertip. It's hard to tell a goalkeeper at 4-0 she's having an outstanding oh, game, but Miranda is. Rapino, that's a good delivery. One back was there again. Still with the United States and Tobin Heath. Kelly O'Hara tips the ball into the center. Good clearance by Rodriguez. Here's the 15-year-old Herrera. Good determination from Avi Lapelbe. <laughs> Megan Rapino. Now operating on the left-hand side. Here comes the service. Daniela Cruz able to cut that one out. Mikel Rodriguez. So Mariela Campos and she's fouled by Megan Rapino. Free kick to Costa Rica. Well, Rampone and Bueller have done such a good job of stepping with that forward when the ball is played in. Made it very difficult for them to hold up the ball. And we talked to Rampone before the Olympics asking if she thought it was possible to put another World Cup on the resume. And she said, I'm feeling as good as I ever have. I won't say never. But the way she's playing, I can't see her stopping soon. Granados, it's another attempt, it's high wide, maybe not so handsome, and it's a goal kick to Hope Solo in the United States. Coming up at halftime, Russ and Kate will break down the first half highlights, we'll talk about a very big week ahead in American soccer, all that and more on the US Soccer Halftime Report, presented by Century 21. 90 seconds plus stoppage time remaining. A convincing performance by the gold medalist so far. Megan Rapino searching for more goals here. What a great run that is by Alex Morgan. Tobin Heath is at the back post. Tobin Heath will get there. It's a nonchalant flick with the outside of her right boot, and it was a good save by Miranda. Megan Rapino, right foot drive. It's a good one. And it's rolled over the goal line, and it's 5 0. And you have to feel for Miranda. But it's two goals on the afternoon for Megan Rapino, and it's USA 5, Costa Rica 0.
Rapino picks this one up at the top of the box. Terrible clearance, good first touch. Unleashes one and it dips at the last moment. You could see Miranda leaning right as that ball was coming into her body. The last moment it dips to her left. She can't get down to make the save. She's disappointed in herself because with the save she's made today, that one wasn't one of the harder ones, but she's been tested. That goal has been target practice, so you have to feel for her. She looks crushed, Erica Miranda, but she's been magnificent between the posts for Costa Rica. An unfortunate situation, but that ball, as you say, Carly, did swerve at the last second. Megan Rapino, who scored two terrific long-range efforts, one against Colombia and one against Canada in the semi-final. One back turns in field. Shannon Box. Such great vision and tactical awareness from Shannon Box throughout her career, and particularly in that gold medal match. Into the feet of Lloyd. Campos with the challenge. Rapino trying to win the ball back to the United States, but Costa Rica battling well, gamefully, in the center of the park. But they're being outclassed here by the gold medal winners and the number one ranked team in women's soccer in the world with those freshly minted gold medals it's Oban Heath who had that opportunity a few moments ago and he goes to Alex Morgan she's quick but not quite that quick we'll only have one minute of time added on we're almost at the end of that now Kyle you really do want entertainment at the end of a game like this that's what the United States are providing here on the fan tribute tour. It's about entertaining the crowd. That's exactly what the United States are doing. Ibanez blows the whistle for half time. Abby Wambach has delighted her hometown crowd here with two goals. She now has 145 in international soccer. She's close to within 13 of the great Mia Hamm's record of 158. It's a rout so far at Salem Stadium. 5-0 it is at the moment. I'm sure we'll see some substitutions in the second 45 minutes. Some tired legs out there in the heat after their exertions at London 2012. But they've been terrific so far, as has the uh, Costa Rican goalkeeper Miranda. High fives for her. Let's head to the side of the field. Carl Martino is with Megan Rapino. Thanks, Arlo. Megan, all these fans watched from thousands of miles away when you guys created all of those magical moments in the run for the gold. What's it like to be able to do this in front of them to celebrate with them? Oh, it's the absolute best. This is this is really the only way we know how to say thank you is just to play, put on a good show. Um, and they've been absolutely unbelievable thus far. You seem to be enjoying yourselves out there. Is this how the store is going to go? I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, yeah, it's been fun so far. Like I said, the crowd's amazing. Nice to get a few goals as well. Now tell me what your feelings were when Pia announced to you guys this morning that she was going to be stepping down as the head coach. Um, I mean, it's obviously disappointing for sure. Um, we've had five good years with her. I've had four. Um, I do feel like it's a good time, though. I think she's ready, um, and I think it'll be good to get a fresh start. But, I mean, her track record with us is pretty unbelievable. So uh, best of luck to the next coach that comes in. Well, and best of luck to you during this tour. Thanks, Megan. Arlo? Kyle, thank you. Thanks to Megan Rapino as well. 17 international goals for her now, two in the first half. The Century 21 halftime report to come from Rochester, New York. It's a jamboree of soccer, the USA lead, 5-0. Welcome back to Salem Stadium in Rochester, New York. There is your halftime score presented by Panasonic Tough Pad. It's a romp so far for the United States. Some substitutions have been made, as we would expect, in a friendly international. And there they are, a trio of them. Becky Sauerbrunn, a central defender, will come in for Rachel Bueller. Heather O'Reilly will make her 171st appearance. She put the cross in for the famous Morgan goal against Canada. She's in for Shannon Box. And Heather Mitz, number two, just out of your screen, replaces Amy Lapelbet at right back. So Heather O'Reilly looking to add to her 34 international goals. A three-time gold medal winner. Becky Sauerbrunn got into action in the London Games. Actually played 10 minutes in the final for Rachel Bueller. And for Heather Mitz, 128 
international appearances for her now. So is it a question of how many for the United States in this second half? Miranda, the goalkeeper for Costa Rica, has been absolutely terrific. Here's a substitute at half-time for Costa Rica, Mayra Almazan. Early pressure being exerted here by the United States. Alex Morgan hungry for goals. One already this afternoon, two for Abby one back on her home turf. There's a drive, there's a slice this time from Alex Morgan. Two goals for Megan Rapino as well. She looks happy with life, Alex Morgan. Mariela Campos. Number four, goes to Raquel Rodriguez of Penn State. She scored eight international goals, comfortably the leading scorer in international soccer in this youthful Costa Rican side. One back, first time ball, Alex Morgan just beaten to it by Miranda. The flag is up on the far side. And there's a substitute for Costa Rica. Mayra Almazan is into the game. Barantes has come out. She attends the University of California, Santa Barbara, hometown of La Puente in California. She attends South Hills High School, just 18 years of age. Well, and again, just such a great opportunity for these players to test themselves against the best in the world. Sauerbrook. <laughs> Tobin Heath. Diagonal ball to Megan Rapino. Uncharacteristic miscontrol from Rapino. Onto her favoured right foot. Cross goes into the near post. Costa Rica can bring it clear through Campos. Dwelling in possession, but tidies up nicely. Deanna Saints. Challenge from Parley Lloyd is unlawful. It's a free kick to Costa Rica. I asked Carly Lloyd yesterday about that second goal that she scored, the two-goal performance in the gold medal match, the 2-1 victory over Japan. The move was terrific. She picked up the ball around about the halfway line and just set off down the centre of the field. She said she was waiting to play in Abby Wambach or Alex Morgan, who peeled away to the flanks making runs. That took defenders with them. She said it wasn't as good as her strike against France in the opening match of the Olympic Games, but it was pretty sweet. Then she disappeared, sprinting away towards the bench. What I love, your joy. Arlo, was the quote from Pia Sunag at the end of the tournament saying, I love when players prove me wrong, and that's what Carly Lloyd did with an incredible tournament. She started off on the bench. It was Lauren Chaney who was preferred in that attacking central midfield role. Chaney had a good Olympics, but when Shannon Box was injured with a hamstring problem in the 17 minutes of the opening game, in came Carly Lloyd, and they, an attacking two in the centre of the park. Carly Lloyd, though, had a new role of defensive midfielder. Here's a possibility here for Andrade for Costa Rica. They're still in the attack. Long clearance here by O'Hara, but she miscues Rodriguez in pursuit of this one. Heather Mitz presents the corner kick, but it's a throw into Costa Rica. So it's a new role for Carly Lloyd. I think she was happy to be on the field for the United States, having spent so much time on the bench before the games. And then when Shannon Box came in for that gold medal match, she was released into her more preferred role of attacking central midfield. And then she scored the two goals. Four in total in the tournament. And she scored the last three goals in finals. The last player to score a, a goal in a gold medal match for the United States was Abby Wambach back in 2004. The extra time winning goal against Brazil. The last three have been scored in 08 and 12 by Carly Lloyd. Little tug on the shirt of Sauerbrook. Play on, says the referee. Here's Rampone. Kelly O'Hara. Right, 
But you gotta give credit to Costa Rica. They've come out in the second half and tried to high press the United States a little bit. They wanna try to get back into this game. They're not simply looking to minimize the damage. Abby Wambach battling away. And she's fouled. Free kick to the United States, taken quickly by Rapino, but it's about 10 yards away from the incident itself, and we'll have to go back. She just released Heather O'Reilly down the left-hand side. When Pia Sunhaga covered her face with her hands after that one, she wanted to see more goals. And I've, I've been watching her, looking over my shoulder to her to my left during this game, and I have never seen a coach enjoy a game as much as she does. It's almost as if she feels like she's out there. She, mimics the movements she gets excited when the play builds up and she can see a chance is coming she told us yesterday yes it was pure joy for us not redemption she said as the coach she always had to plan for each game tactically but that's a typical scene a vision there of pearson Hug with a broad smile on her face think of the united states deep cross but into the side netting and a goal kick to costa rica she said she survived the hurt of 2011 and that World Cup final defeat to Japan because they played so well in the final. It gave her plenty of encouragement going forward. Two gold medal winning performances for the United States under Pia Sundhager. She went home to Sweden. Who knows, that's maybe where she is going to end up now, back at home in charge of the Swedish national team. Free kick to the United States. She said it was crazy when she went home. She said yes to every interview. She said it was my moment. I was going to enjoy it. But I think that life on the road has probably got to Pia Sundhag and she wants to go home for a spell. Sweden hosting the European Championships for them. She was a terrific player as well in her time with the Swedish national team. Rapino with the free kick, plenty of curl on that one. Rombach is in the open, eight yards out, and that ball is still in play. Mix hits it, or tries to hug it into the penalty area, fails to do so, and Rombach a rise smile. No, she perhaps should have done better. Well, she gets wide open, she gets ahead of it a little bit. You can see right there, she tries to hold her run up. She just doesn't read the curve of the ball and the flight of the ball. Got a little ahead of herself and tried to stop and snap the header back, and you can see her smile a little bit. She knows she can do better than that. Pia yeah, Sundhaga yeah, said earlier on it was uh, an honor to be able to coach these players for five years. She says that she learned a tremendous amount from them. She announced it in a team meeting this morning at 10.15. I understand there was a standing ovation for her from her players. She said she always admired the spirit and character of the US team. But to experience that firsthand on the training field and from the bench as their coach was truly special. She says she'll treasure that for the rest of her life. to go back to what you were talking about earlier Arlo with you know the travel and being away from home being tough on her I think one of the big reasons she might take that Sweden job is the challenge the challenge of taking that team to the next level because they're right on the cusp Campos slides it into the penalty area looking for the run of Kristin Granados more challenges ahead for Pia Sundhaga and she'll be fondly remembered substitution about to be made for the United States, Amy Rodriguez coming into the game and actually Hope Solo is being replaced as well by Jill Lloyden. Huge applause for Hope Solo. Lloyden was the reserve goalkeeper during the Olympic Games, but Nicole Barnhart has had a, a knee scope since the game, so she's not available today. A quiet afternoon for Hope Solo. And Megan Rapino comes off as well. Two goals for her this Andrew afternoon. Andrew. She's replaced by Amy Rodriguez. Rapino. 94th international appearance for Rodriguez. She scored five goals in a single game in the Olympic qualifiers against the Dominican Republic. Matched a record set by Michelle Akers. Sydney LaRue did it during the same tournament as well. And Brandy Chastain. Herrera drives it, long range, it's blocked by Carly Lloyd. Daniela Cruz, and a first touch here for Jill Lloyden. 27 years old, from New Jersey, third choice goalkeeper of the 2011 World Cup as well. It's only her third international appearance. Well, Hope Solo's been hogging 
that position between the sticks for a long time now. And to great effect, Sauerbrunn. Alvarado, looking for the substitute, Mayra Almazan. Good day's work for Megan Rapino. Sauerbrunn made three appearances during the Olympic Games, including in the final. One back, Carly Lloyd. First high ball through to Heather O'Reilly. Here's a possibility for the United States. O'Reilly on her left foot drives it, and it's a yard over the bar. She's so full of energy, Carl. You know exactly what you're going to get with Heather O'Reilly, don't you? Direct play, very skillful. Well, she's got terrific pace, and she likes to stay wide, but makes a great diagonal inside run. One touch, gets her head up, ball's bouncing a little bit on that surface. Tries to get it back across the goal. Her angle got worse as that ball was drifting wide. But a good run from Heather O'Reilly, who came off the bench and, as you said earlier, had that huge assist. And that's one of the things Pia talked about before the Olympics is how important the bench was going to be. And she was right. She's been in the side since a 17-year-old, Heather O'Reilly. Here's Rodriguez. O'Reilly didn't appear in the 2012 gold medal match, but she did play in the gold medal games in 2004 and 2008. She actually scored the quickest ever women's soccer goal in the Olympic Games against New Zealand, just 42 seconds into a match. Here's O'Hara. First time from Morgan. Heavy touch from Lloyd. Throw into the United States. Costa Rica will be delighted with the way the first 11 minutes have gone here in the second half, trailing by five goals to nil. The 15-year-old Herrera in field to Granados. Advancing here is Raquel Rodriguez towards the edge of the area. Rodriguez from Penn State. Herrera, low drive. Lloyd unable to save comfortably. That'll build a bit of confidence in the Costa Rican ranks. Well, they got some numbers forward. They kept the ball. When they're clean with those first two passes, they can beat the U.S. line of pressure. The United States are pushing a lot of numbers forward, but when they give that ball up easily, it's just trouble for them all day long. Here's Heather Mitz. Tobin Heath may be the closing stages of Heather Mitz's career. A third gold medal for her as well, 34 years old. Hinted on Twitter before the games that this may be hit for her. She made one appearance during the London Games against Colombia. Played 90 minutes in a shutout for the United States. 128 internationals. Started all six games at the victorious 2008 Olympics. An unused substitute in the 2004 final. Daniela Cruz. Raquel Rodriguez. Recent through ball to the substitute Almazan. Lloyd was quickly off her line. Costa Rica starting to grow in confidence to play some soccer here, to force themselves on the game, on the Olympic gold medalists. Diana Seitz, pressured by Alex Morgan. Well, that's one of the things this young Costa Rican team is going to learn from this game is how quickly you have to make decisions against the best teams in the world. You don't have a lot of time on the ball. You have to keep it when you win it after running so much. Carla Alama, the coach of Costa Rica. Wombat. Miss Cues, more energy here from Costa Rica. Alvarado. Here it goes, and that's a foul on the edge of the penalty area by Heather Mitz on Kristin Granados. Free kick to Costa Rica, an opportunity some 19 yards away from goal. Possibilities here for the visitors. Alvarado may choose to strike this one. And you have Number Rodriguez 10. as yeah. well, who's very good on set pieces. Maybe two options there. He's the leading international scorer, Rodriguez, in this squad. Alvarado now all alone, has three international goals. Plays for the Saprissa Club in San Jose, Costa Rica. She's rejoined by Penn State's Raquel Rodriguez, number 11. 
Banyas, the referee, just ensuring the wall is back 10 yards. Four US players in there. Alvarado strikes it, just clips the top of the wall and goes over. It's the first corner kick of the game for Costa Rica. We're trying to find some consolation in this game in Rochester, New York, with less than half an hour remaining. Scored against Canada, Alvarado in the 2008 Under-17s World Cup. Jill Lloyd in between the posts for the United States. Corner kick from Granados. Deep service. Christy Rampone there battling at the back stick with the substitute for Costa Rica, Mayra Almazan. Here come the United States again. Carly Lloyd. O'Reilly wants it in the penalty area. Lloyd's got a sight set on goal here. Still Carly Lloyd. Is this a moment for the United States? And just at the crucial moment, she got underneath it. And for now, there's no repeat of those heroics at Wembley Stadium in the gold medal match. Well, great strength here to get by the first challenge. And with that fast surface, you can see how the ball rolls with her, stays with her pace. Defender comes at her, bubbles up, and she doesn't even take a look at Heather O'Reilly in the middle. She's thinking one thing, shoot, and the better option was Heather O'Reilly. But at 5-0, looks like she just wants to join the fun. She told us yesterday, I'm not leaving that field without a gold medal. That was her thought during the second half. Head forward, Abby Wambach is offside. Flag came up on the far side of the ground. Two goals so far for Abby Wambach. Back at her hometown of Rochester, New York. Fresh from the opening of Wambach Way outside of Salem Stadium here. The United States have this remarkable record when she scores in the first half of games. 56-0-1. Soon to be 57-0-1. They've only lost two games in a 101. When she scores a goal, a remarkable, remarkable record. What a talisman to have, Abby Wambach. 27 goals in her last 30 internationals now. Rodriguez. That was blocked by Sauerbrunn. Alex Morgan drives it through, looking for the run of Tobin Heath. It was well read by Daniela Cruz. Ball over the top, looking for Herrera, the 15-year-old. Here's Amy Rodriguez. Turns with purpose. Looking for support. There's some tired legs out there for the United States. Tobin Heath. Three assists for her at the Olympic Games. Ramp home. Mitz. Costa Rica about to make another substitution. So Melissa Herrera will never forget today. The 15-year-old is being withdrawn. And here comes Mariana Benavides, a 17-year-old. On the day after Christmas Day on 1994, played for the Costa Rica under-20s against the USA in a CONCACAF tournament in March. And she's into the action here. Carly Lloyd. Amy Rodriguez on the overlap is Kelly O'Hara. Still Rodriguez. O'Reilly, she's going to have a drive. Low, and he got into the body of Miranda. But wide it goes. Should we give the goalkeeper the benefit of the doubt on that one, Kyle? After maybe, today, I think so. Maybe she watched it wide. Well, she's come, she's come up with some magnificent saves. Heather O'Reilly again tucking into the middle. No one's stepping out on her. And she's got a great strike on her. And we're going to say she let that one go wide. Lloyd battling for possession in the midfield for the United States. Becky Sauerbrunn, Christy Rampo. You'd think she'd be the first off the field when a central defensive change is made, Rampo, at the age of 37. But 
None of it. 22 Olympic appearances for her. That's a US record. She started 22 of the last 23 games since the 2000 games, since the start of the Sydney Olympics, in fact. Only rested for one of those matches. A match against Australia in 2004 in the Athens Games. From home with the clearance, up towards one back. Ugardi sends it back into the United States penalty area. Carly Lloyd tidying up on the edge. O'Hara to Amy Rodriguez. Throwing to the United States. Kate Marcraft, part of our broadcast team today, former US international, twice an Olympic gold medalist. Kate, you played a lot of your career with Christy Rampone. What an extraordinary servant she's been to US soccer. Absolutely, and the amazing thing about Rampone is that she actually got better after pregnancy. A lot of us kind of decline and never regain form, but that new sense of perspective that children bring, all of a sudden she has this confidence. She was always probably the best defender after Joy Fawcett had left, and then she just took it took it to a whole another level with 1v1s and then they moved into the center and she really took responsibility for leading this back line and leading this team those two children thank you kate reese and riley were at the olympic games traveling with christy rampone she's the only member of the 1999 world cup winning squad to still be active and playing for the national team she was a mere pup 24 years old on that famous day at the rose bowl pasadena that penalty kicks victory Courtesy of the winning strike from Brandy Chastain, the victory over China. Here's Rodriguez. Low cross comes into the penalty area. Opportunity here for Costa Rica. It's still there for them. Granada saved by Lloyden. Terrific save. What an opportunity for Christian Granadas to put Costa Rica on the scoreboard. But the substitute goalkeeper comes up big for the United States. Yes. Well, as this ball comes through, it's right back at the penalty spot to flex and drops right down to the floor and what a great save from Lloyd and she just comes makes herself big doesn't hesitate as that ball drops down to Granados she doesn't take a beat she gets right out there makes herself big good save best opportunity of the game so far for Costa Rica but they trail by five goals to nil all five strikes in the first half here in Rochester Sydney LaRue we're going to see her soon this should be exciting she injects a lot of pace and energy into this U.S. side. Scored a goal in the in the Olympic tournament in the quarter-final against New Zealand. Heather O'Reilly to the byline she goes. Here comes the cross. It comes in towards Morgan. It's a good header clear. Olgardi concedes the corner, and I think Abby Wambach's day is done. And just listen to the reaction if number 14 is held up. They may decide to do it after the corner here. There's an opportunity for one back to maybe register a hat trick. And I think that is happening. Sydney LaRue will have to be patient. What a moment it will be for Abby Wombach to register a hat trick on home turf. She's at the back post. Here comes the corner. One back is the target. It's a flicked header in the end. Here's Tobin Heath. Elaborate skill from her, but the chance is lost for the United States. Costa Rica coming away with it. Granados, who had that opportunity a few moments ago. And here's some space for Campos to gallop into. But wouldn't you know it, Christy Rampone sprints across, covering beautifully. But well, so great, is it. Arlo, when you have a center back that has pace like that and reads the game well. You know, a lot of times you either have a center back that's up there in age and doesn't cover a lot of ground but has great understanding of the game, takes great angles, or a center back that has tremendous speed and makes up for it. She has both of those. Heather Mix, he switched to left back. Rodriguez with a deep service and Miranda was there just ahead of one back. Just stuck out a hand, a crucial palm at a crucial moment, and Wombach denied the hat trick. I think they're trying to serve Abby Wombach here. Sydney Derue just in front of you, Kyle, on the sideline, hands behind her back, waiting to get in. I think she understands here that maybe Wombach has been given a few minutes to try and register this third goal. Forward it goes from Sauber towards Wombach. Headed in the wrong direction this time, and here's Rodriguez. Almazan. Hey. 
Campos. Alvarado. Is the right back Deanna Sites. Dispossessed by Rodriguez. Still Amy Rodriguez. Now Alex Morgan has it. One back peels away towards the edge of the penalty area. Morgan's going for the line here. This would be dramatic if one back could score. And in the end, Morgan gets to the byline but just couldn't get the center in. She gets a thumbs up from Abby Wombach, but I think that's it for her today. And she's going to milk the applause. Abby Wombach out of the game. Sydney LaRue in. Two goals. And they're on the feet at Salem Stadium. Wonderful reception for Abby Wambach, and here's an exciting talent. 22-year-old Sydney LaRue. Eight goals for her in international soccer in 18 appearances. It was her first gold medal, of course, at London 2012. Almazan attacking here for Costa Rica. Heather Mitz back and ushers the ball out of play. Well, LaRue has been the player they've called on when they've needed goals late, that super sub, but as Abby Wambach gets more and more games on those legs and the Achilles injuries and things that wear down as you get older, LaRue might be the natural one to take her place, the understudy, and that pace up top, Morgan and LaRue, is scary. Heather O'Reilly on the end of this pass, this long raking pass from Carly Lloyd. Opportunity, uh, LaRue is in the area, here she is, early opportunity, Sydney LaRue turns, the shot is blocked, it's still there for Rodriguez, edge of the penalty area, skill from Amy Rodriguez, LaRue and Rodriguez both scored five goals in a single game during the qualifiers. And that pass from O'Hara, just wrong-footed Alex Morgan, who fell awkwardly. But she sees the funny side. Her reaction, Sidney LaRue, when we scored uh, that clinching goal in the 87th minute at St. James's Park, Newcastle, in the northeast of England. It made the score 2-0. It guaranteed a semi-final spot against Canada. Well, she just went bonkers, sprinting away, huge smile on her face towards the USA bench. Hope Solo telling us yesterday that it was the it's the best team atmosphere she's experienced for the United States. And players like LaRue, who knew their role, she wasn't going to start any of the games. She waited patiently for every opportunity off the bench. O'Hara with a deep cross, Miranda with the catch. And LaRue has pushed one of the defenders on the edge of the six-yard box, and it's a free kick. To Costa Rica and Miranda to stay down there here with her left leg bent and the trainer will come onto the field she's been busy this afternoon Erica Miranda she made seven saves by the 25 minute mark Kyle Abbey one back off the field still wants to go on 31 years of age to the World Cup in 2015 but she's in great form right now isn't she well you don't see her stopping anytime soon I mean she's playing some of her best soccer of her career and you know everyone's going to talk about the goals 145 goals in 189 international appearance that is an unbelievable strike rate but her legacy will be the players she leaves behind up top she's preparing Alex Morgan and LaRue to be stars and, and that's such a big thing I remember when Brian McBride was coming to the end of his career for the US men's team it was Landon Donovan and some of the younger forwards that he worked with and he helped and he took under his wing and made them the players they are today and showed them how to be a professional day in and day out and that's what Abby Wambach is doing for these young forwards that are gonna take her place when she's gone that troublesome Achilles injury has been strapped up as well She'll be patched up. She'll be a huge part of this fan tribute tour. She scored that crucial penalty in the semi-final against Canada with the United States trailing by three goals to nil. It was the first time in any international game they'd come back from three deficits. She told us yesterday she changed her mind at the penalty kick as well. She was going to go to Erica McLeod's left-hand side, 
some firecrackers going off in the sky above us here at Salem Stadium but then she decided at the last second and you're told not to do that Kyle aren't you make your mind up stick with your original decision she changed her mind and it went in off the post it couldn't have been more perfect in such a precious situation well that's what separates players I mean it's such a mental game you have players in practice that are roofing penalties in the top corner players in practice that can one and two touch around the field but in international moments in front of a crowd when games are on the line when medals are on the line that's when you really see the difference in some players and it was her knowledge of the game as well she was lobbying the referee you remember Erica McLeod was pulled up for time wasting taking longer than six seconds to get rid of the ball in her own penalty area that's the law in the game the referee felt that she was taking too many liberties it turns out that she'd been warned at half time as well from the ensuing free kick Abby Wombach was always giving the referee the, the count she said she counted ten times one two three four above six seconds and in the end it convinced the referee to blow for the free kick from that free kick there was a handball a penalty kick and Abby Wombach scored it to make it 3-3 we all know how the game ended up 4-3 with a 123rd minute goal from Alex Morgan. Here comes Costa Rica. Drive comes in from Rodriguez. Lloyd and equal to it. But it was Abby Wombach's knowledge of the game, professionalism, and then ultimately her calm from the spot, which kept US hopes alive of a third consecutive Olympic gold medal. Sydney Leroux in pursuit, and she's through. Sydney LaRue for the United States, and it's six. Cool as you like from the substitute. A ninth international goal for Sydney LaRue, and it's a slightly calmer response than we saw in the Olympic Games, but that was a wonderful finish. Well, when I said earlier that this combination in the future is going to be scary, this is why. Look at how much ground she has to make up. The defender has five yards on her, gets by her, gets the touch, a positive first touch, improves her angle, and look at this. This last touch improves her angle, curls it in, side netting at top speed. This is a forward for the future. Goal scored in the 78th minutes. There's the reaction from Abby Wombach. Inside the final 13 minutes here. The opening game of the fan tribute tour for the United States. Gold medalists, of course, at the London 2012 Games. That epic victory over Japan in the final in front of 80,203 at the famous and storied Wembley Stadium. That's a record crowd for a women's soccer match at the Olympic Games, by the way. The United States have played in all five gold medal matches. You go back way back to 96, they beat China by two goals to one. Shannon McMillan and Tiffany Milbrit on the score sheet then. 2004, Abby Wombach got the winner in extra time to beat Brazil by two goals to one. 2008, it was Carly Lloyd in extra time, 1-0 the score. Carly Lloyd with two in 2012 to beat Japan. It was a silver medal in 2000 against Norway, a 3-2 defeat. Tiffany Milbrit scored two goals in that game, the last time a US player has scored two in a final until Carly Lloyd with her brace, her double, on the hallowed turf of Wembley Stadium. Morgan, will the floodgates open in the final 10 minutes, I wonder here. The United States avoided extra time for a fourth consecutive final with that 2-1 win over Japan. They've only lost two Olympic matches in their history, both, ironically, to Norway in that 2000 final in Sydney and a group match, the opening match of the 2008 games in Beijing. An absolute force when the Olympic rings are on show. This is better from Alvarado. This is what we've wanted to see from her all game long, pulling the strings, one and two touch. Almazan with a left footed effort. That will drift harmlessly wide. Thank you for U.S. Soccer on NBC is presented by the Panasonic Tough Pad Tablet. Fearless. And by Century 21. Century 21 is the official real estate company of the U.S. Soccer National Teams. 
crowd of 13,208 being announced to the 13,208 in the sunshine. I think they've enjoyed themselves this afternoon. Sydney LaRue with another forward run. The ball won't reach her this time, though. Here's Heather O'Reilly. Still battling away for her place at the top table of US women's soccer. Tobin Heath. Becky Sauerbrunn. Nicely played inside to Kelly O'Hara. Solid challenge by Maria Mugalde. Kelly O'Hara played every minute of the Olympic Games. Actually assisted Megan Rapinoe's rasping 25-yard shot in the semi-final against Canada. Thea Sumhager told us during the Olympic Games that Kelly O'Hara has grown tremendously as a player. Only her 26th appearance. She was a mainstay at left back during the entire tournament. A converted left midfielder, O'Hara. Drop to the feet of Alex Morgan, yes he does. Gets it back from Heath, Morgan, edge of the area. Close control from Alex Morgan, she's fouled on the edge of the penalty area. Alvarado just clipping her ankle. Morgan stays down. Concerning times for the United States. Well, that's the trouble when you have really quick feet is you take knocks all the time. You get to the ball before defenders. They think they've got a chance at it. And the quick feet of Alex Morgan will get there more times than not. And that follow through will take her right on the leg as it did there. The United States only have one outfield substitute remaining. But as Pierre Sundhager told us yesterday, Lauren Chaney is carrying an injury, so unlikely to see action today. Here's Carly Lloyd then. The hero from Wembley Stadium in the gold medal match. Opportunity for her. Lloyd kills it around the wall and into the back of the net. That's absolutely beautiful. She drops to her knees, Carly Lloyd, as she did after scoring the opening goal at Wembley. It's 7-0 to the United States. Well, this is just too easy for her. Again, the wall doesn't jump. You have a wall that already is vertically challenged. No one gets off their feet. Nothing the goalkeeper can do about that as Carly Lloyd effortlessly curls that into the side netting. Terrific free kick. 39 international goals now for Carly Lloyd. Things just get better and better for her. Almazan. Here's Amy Rodriguez for the United States. Tobin Heath. Kelly O'Hara. Keep ball for the USA. O'Hara advances. Plays it through towards Morgan. Alex Morgan, the angle's tight. The cross comes in. It is dangerous, but there are no United States players there. Gabriela Guillen clears for a throw in. Morgan appears to be running freely. Substitution to be made here by Costa Rica. Deanna Sainz of the University of South Florida will come out. What a big moment this is for 17-year-old Noel Sanz from Chaparral High School in Temecula, California. Also plays for the Legends FC club there. Had a chat to her yesterday. She said what a huge honor to play against the United States. She watched all the games. She's committed to the University of Alabama next fall. And she got in touch with her high school coach during the week, Maury Kalshom, who gave me a scouting report. Alex Morgan hits the base of the post. Behind it goes for a goal kick. She told me she's an excellent attacker from the back. Noel Sands, great dribbling skills. She's a real leader of their team. Well, coach Kalshon and club coach Josh Hodges have done a great job with Noel Sands. 
who told us yesterday, thanks to those two for prepping me for this moment. Playing against the United States national team in front of 13,000 people and a nationwide television audience. Inside the final five minutes. Alvarado, one of the Costa Rican players who looks to be comfortable at this level. Rodriguez. Campos is wide on the left-hand side. Closed down by Heather Mitz. And Pone concedes the throw in. One last substitution to be made here for Costa Rica. Yesmi Rodriguez will come into the game. But here's Kelly O'Hara for the United States. Amy Rodriguez. O'Hara again. Let's hear from Kate Margraff on this situation. Kate is a big performance, seven goals. It's a celebration of soccer here. You played in these tribute tours. This would be a good start for them. They'll be happy with this, won't they, after that Olympic experience, which must have taken an awful lot out of them. Well, the lack of adrenaline that you have usually coming into this game is not apparent. I think this is the best I've ever seen the women's national team play in this environment. Coming out, playing against Costa Rica, playing in front of a sold-out crowd, which definitely helped add the intensity of, and the feeling of the match. But it's a great showing for the United States, and it's great that there's so many players on the team that got some minutes today. That shot from Benavides was blocked. And as we look to the future, Kate, and this is a time to do it. It's the beginning of the end, if you like, of the Pia Sundhaga era. Players like Sidney LaRue, Tobin Heath, they've got bright futures in this side, haven't they? Absolutely, especially Tobin Heath. In college, Pia Sundhaga actually reached out to Anson Dorrance at Uni University of North Carolina and said, can you put her at the 10 spot? I want her to be an attacking center midfielder. So there'll be lots of new players coming in. And with a new coach, this victory tour has taken on a whole... LaRue is clean through on the ball from Morgan. Sydney LaRue, and it's a good save for Miranda. Still Sydney LaRue, she can square it here, she does! And Heather O'Reilly gets in on the out. 8-0 to the United States. Delight on the face of Heather O'Reilly, a 35th international goal for her. And it matches the scoreline in the opening game between these two sides back in 2000. 8-0 the score. And again, that pace over the top of LaRue, perfect timing. Look at the separation she gets from that center back. Gets her head up, not a great angle to shoot from here. Fortunate to see the rebound come back out to her, composes herself, and then Heather O'Reilly, just get anything on it. Great follow-up run from Heather O'Reilly, and eight nothing, you'd think it's one nothing there. Everyone getting in on the fun, and Heather O'Reilly celebrating that one. Last substitution for Costa Rica, Yesmi Rodriguez comes into the game. There she is, 18 years old. She's replaced Gabriela Guillen, the Creighton University left back, who will now fly back home to Omaha, Nebraska for a big game against Kansas tomorrow for the Blue Jays. Thoroughly professional and entertaining performance from the United States women's national team here in front of a huge crowd who've come to celebrate their gold medal with them. And we're inside the final minute of the 90. And Kate Margraff, back to you to get your final thoughts on, on this game. It's a long victory tour, isn't it? But they're going to be delighted with their, their performance today. Well, they're going to be happy, and it's a great stepping stone because now they're going to have to look towards the future because we have a brand new coach. You have to impress him or her, and now it's the time to get your feet moving again, get acclimated, and the next camp, it's go time. Ball from Kate in the post-game show. It is an audition for all of these players now to impress a new coach. O'Reilly tips it through. Is this number nine? Alex Morgan. 
You can see the whites of the goalkeeper's eyes. And wide he goes with the left foot. There'll only be a minute of stoppage time, much to the relief, I'm sure, of the Costa Rican side. A chastening experience for them, but a learning experience. Alex Morgan with one goal today, taking her international tally to 31, her 2012 tally to 21. They call her baby horse in the squad because she gallops all over the field at such great pace. She's offside this time, though, Alex Morgan. From Diamond Rock, California. She had that 391-minute scoreless streak during the Olympic Games after scoring two against France in that comeback victory in the opening game. But she was always providing assists. A memorable one for Abby Wambach for the winning goal against North Korea at Old Trafford. And she, of course, assisted Carly Lloyd for the opening goal in the gold medal match as well. But the big moment that most will remember from the Olympic Games for the United States, that 123rd minute header in extra time to avoid penalties and send the US to the final. What a fun afternoon it's been in Rochester. And it's all over. A convincing victory to kick off the fan tribute tour. Abby Wambach with two goals back at her home stadium amongst her friends and family. Goals number 144 and 145 of her career. Heather O'Reilly, she capped things off with the eighth goal of the afternoon. Smiles all round for the national team. On a mixed day for them, Pia Sundhager announced to them in their team meeting earlier this morning that she was stepping down after the next match of this tour. A smiling Pia Sundhager shakes hands with the officials. She'll head back to her homeland of Sweden, maybe for the national job there. We will wait and see. So as one era ends, another begins. Sydney LaRue with her goal this afternoon off the bench for Abby Wambach. One of the bright young things of US women's soccer, Megan Rapino, two goals for her. She got us started with a lovely curling free kick in the first half. Talking of Pia Sundhager, she's with Kyle Martino. Well, Pia, how much fun was that? That was fun, especially first half and late in the second half. Had some combinations and eight goals. You can't beat that. Now, you delivered some tough news this morning to the team. How difficult was that decision to step down as the head coach of the US soccer team? Um, I don't know for the players. For me, uh, mixed feelings. But, um, you know, I just want to go home. At the same time, I think I'm pretty good to be here in the presence, so I really want to uh, have a good game with those guys. And there will be two more games, and uh, they've made me look good. And uh, it's just phenomenal to be around those guys. Well, so Sweden have a big tournament coming up, the Euro Championships. What are the odds we see you as the head coach of that team for that big tournament? Uh, I hope that I will be coaching Sweden next year when they host the, the European Championship. What memories do you take away from your time with the U.S. soccer team? Uh, the team spirit and always coming back. And there is two situations. One, when Abby scores a goal uh, against Brazil. For me, it's the best moment in my soccer life. And the other one is Wembley. Wembley and we win the Olympic gold medal, you know, in uh, that wonderful stadium against Japan. It's hard, it's hard to do to explain. It's just phenomenal. It's a magical moment. Well, you gave these fans an incredible run, a gold medal. Congratulations on your success and good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Harlow? Thanks, Kyle. Pia Sundhager. What a character, a tremendous help to us at NBC during the Olympic Games as well. She called me the night before the gold medal match to tell me about the team change with Shannon Box coming back into the side. Now that's service. All smiles, Pia Sundhager, and as you heard her tell Kyle there, she hopes to be the coach of Sweden, who are a power in themselves. In time for the European Championships next year, she just wants to go home. But what a job she's done. Twice Olympic champions, runners-up memorably in the World Cup in 2011. The Pia Sundhager era for the US women's national team is drawing to a close. So a victory for the United States to start their tribute tour at Salem Stadium in Rochester. They beat Costa Rica 8-0.